suffered with rejection majority of their life. And now, having dealt with that, God is saying, now, I'm going to turn that around. And that thing that was your weakness is now going to become your strength. And so, I've been born again maybe about 22 years. But I dealt with rejection seriously probably about four years ago. I remember lying in my bed and I remember writing this letter. I was writing a letter to myself. Um, this broken person, this broken woman at this point. And I knew in that moment that was going to be the last time I cry about rejection, being rejected. I knew that was going to be the last time. And so one day, some days later, might have been weeks later, um, I was on my patio, and I took that letter, and I did something that was more symbolism, so I decided that I was going to burn this letter up, because that was going to be the end of that for me. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter walks out, and she's like, Mommy, what are you doing? I was like, because today is a new day. I'm no longer going to identify myself as someone that is broken, someone that is rejected, mm -hmm. because that is not true. I am not rejected. Amen. I am accepted in God. I am his beloved. Amen. And so, you know, pastors, I just want to thank you so much for everything that you are to me. You know, as Timothy was with Paul, as Joshua was with Moses, that's how I see you. I never saw myself as someone that would be standing here, even though God showed me years ago at the prison. Years ago when I worked at the prison, I had this dream, I had this vision that I was standing behind a pulpit. I was casting out demons. I was like, what? That is a God. That is, there is no way that is me. So today I'm talking, we're going to talk about rejection, but we're going to pray first. Father, Father, I decrease, Lord God, that you may increase. Father, I pray, Lord God, that I don't speak in my emotions, that I don't just speak what's in my head, that you're giving me what I need to say to the people. Father, I thank you that you have already prepared the hearts and the minds of your people to receive the engrafted word, which is able to deliver, which is able to set free, which is able to make whole. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. Rejection. Rejection is the act of not accepting, to turn something down, to dismiss, or to refuse. So in essence, rejection is just the lack of acceptance. We have all experienced rejection in some form or another in our lives, or maybe we were on the other end of it. We rejected someone. We rejected their idea, or we rejected them maybe in a social situation. No one is exempt. It is a part of life you cannot get around it. So let's talk about some of the examples of rejection that most of us can relate to. So there's rejection in relationships, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a co-worker type um, relationship, whether it's in a marital relationship, also, there's rejection that you can receive from a mother or father. There's, some of us might have experienced rejection in that form, which is very, very painful. You know, some of us might have been adopted or might have been in the foster care system or you were given to another family member to raise. That is very, very painful. As I was meditating on this rejection, God brought me back to a time when I was teaching in this facility. Mm. Before I decided where I wanted to teach, I was a substitute teacher, and, I, and I, was, I took an assignment here for a couple of weeks. And I remember meeting these two girls. I've never seen someone um, exhibit or demonstrate so much pain because they were rejected. These two little girls, I know they were less than 10. They might have been 6, 7, or 8. And they had so much rage. They had so much, they wanted to kill each other. I remember I talked to the little girl and asked her why she was so upset. And that little girl told me that her mother had died. In this school, her mother had died and now she was in foster care. And she wanted to rip that other little girl apart. 
So that shows you that rejection is real. We have to acknowledge it, mm -hmm. that, that it hurts, and that it's painful. But I'm not going to leave you there because we've all experienced it. You might have experienced rejection on your job, whether it was a position that you want, you went for a raise, you didn't get it, a promotion on your job. But God said to me, so what you don't get the promotion? If you know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, you would not be concerned with whether or not something worked out, whether or not you didn't get something that you wanted. Mm -hmm. That's in Jeremiah 29 and 11. He said, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you to give you hope and a future. And that's a good future. So what you didn't get the job? He got one better. Amen. So that's, that's how we have to think about it. Not think, oh, I was rejected and meditate on that and use on that. But a door that God has for you, no man can shut. So we have to renew our mind to what his word says, what he says about us. So let's talk about some scriptural examples of rejection. I remember when Pastor first started teaching this approval addiction, he talked about 1 Samuel 15 and 24. And that thing resonated with me so much. It resonated because Saul was rejected. Saul was already king, but he was rejected as king because he disobeyed God because he feared what the people had to say. So when you in fear and you're under approval addiction, you can abort your destiny. Mm -hmm. So my destiny here is to be here today, but if I would stay in approval addiction, if I would submit to fear, because we feel it. I was sitting on that scene and I was like, God, how could the last time I was up here there was no nerves and now the enemy is coming right again? He's not going to stop. So just dismiss him. Amen. Just dismiss, dismiss those thoughts. Amen. So Saul was rejected as king because he feared the people. In Genesis chapter 21, God had promised Abraham, Abraham and Sarah a son. Isaac was the promise, but Abraham and Sarah decided that they were going to help God because guess what? The promise was, is now delayed. It's been years. They, they're about 100 years old. Well, this is not going to happen. So now Sarah's telling Abraham, now we got to, let's, let's, let's help God. Let's get your, your handmaid and, and, and father a child through Hagar. But don't you know, because that was not the promise, Hagar and her son Ishmael were rejected. That was so powerful to me. Joseph was rejected. They, his brother saw the favor of God on his life. They didn't want to do what he did to have that favor. They didn't want to walk in the love of God. They didn't want to have the integrity and the character of God. But they were jealous and they rejected him. And I know that had to be painful. But let's talk about a man that experienced the ultimate rejection. Yes. And I think we all know who that is, and that's Jesus. Yeah. Let's go there. Isaiah 53 and 2. And that's in the Amplified. It says, Isaiah 53 and 2, For he, the servant of God, grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of a dry ground. He has no stately form or majestic splendor that we would look at him, nor handsome appearance that we would be attracted to him. He was despised. Okay, we, oftentimes we're not, we're disliked, but the Bible says that he was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrow and pain and acquainted with grief. Mark 15 and 34 in the King James. When Jesus was on the cross at the point of death. Imagine with me now. Scripture says, Genesis says, Jesus and the Father are one. Him and his word, they are one. And now they're one. And at this point, at the point of death where he's now becoming sin, He's taken on sin. He's now experiencing something that he's never experienced before, which is now separation from his father. So now I like to imagine what that must have felt like. 
It must have been a place where there was darkness, where he could not hear the voice of God. He could no longer sense the presence of God. And he felt rejected, and he cried out to God, my God, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So we see that rejection is painful. It is real. We don't like it. We want to be accepted. There is a need, a basic need that we have to be accepted and to be loved. Now let's talk about some of the effects of rejection. Mm. Emotional and mental pain. Oh yes. Okay, it can lead to depression. Then they have suffered depression. Three years. Comparing yourself, something must be wrong with me. When we compare ourselves, we belittle. I heard someone say that. When we compare ourselves to someone else, we belittle the plan of God that he has just for you. That Ephesians 2 and 10, you should read it in the Amplified. Another effect of rejection is becoming needy and latching on. We've all met those. We might have been needy at some point. Needing the validation, needing the love from others. So we latch on to people because we've been rejected. You know, we've been in another relationship, we were rejected. And then we were rejected again. So rejection on top of rejection and rejection. And now there's this neediness. There's this, 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 this longing to be accepted and to be loved. Just as the woman of Samaria, she had five husbands. Not, probably not literally, but all these different relationships because she wanted to be loved. Amen. I can relate to that. You place your value in people, things, and accomplishment. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much honey you got. Amen. I don't care what degree you have. I don't care if you go to the moon and back. Nothing can satisfy Amen. what only God can do. Amen. That boy cannot Amen. be satisfied with things. Amen. We become people pleasers. We can't say no. We've been rejected. I don't want to hurt nobody. I know what that feels like. Low self-esteem. Another one, now we put walls up because we got to defend ourselves. I'm going to make myself a fortress. Uh-uh. You hurt me. Ain't nobody getting up in here to hurt me. <laughs> and then the last one is fear. Fear. Approval addiction. All of it is related in fear. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 in the Amplified. Let's go there. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 in the Amplified. And this is how we're going to come to have this fear of rejection. I love the Amplified version. It says, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice. We're not cowards. I have to tell myself that. For fear. But he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline. Abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind. Because when fear comes, you don't have a calm and a well-balanced mind. You have to speak to that thing. Amen. You have to think of the things that are above, the things that are lovely and of a good report. You have to rebuke that fear and command that devil to get under your feet. He is a defeated foe. We're not giving him any praise for this fear because it's not him. It's, it's what we're doing to ourselves in our minds. So it just it, those thoughts, they come, but we have to capture them. We can't catch, capture them in our own ability. It is the word of God that will capture those thoughts and bring them under subjection. Now that I've told you what rejection is, how it feels, I gave you examples, and, and, and I told you how it affects, the effects of it. Now I'm going to talk to you how to be free from rejection. Grace, who is Jesus, frees us from rejection. Number one, our approval comes from God. When I began to meditate on this, I found so many scriptures that, that, Symbolize how much God approves us. Galatians 1.15. Write that down. In the Amplified. Psalms 139 and 13 in the Amplified. Jeremiah 1 and 5. I think that's the King James. I can write it. Job 31 and 15. 
Psalms 139 and 15 in the Amplified as well. And I'm going to read those without turning there. It says, but when God who has chosen me and set me apart before I was born, mm -hmm. called me through his grace, he was pleased. It did not matter how I looked. It did not matter how intelligent I was. It did not matter what accomplishments I had. He said, before you were formed, I knew you. I was pleased with you. I approve of you. Amen. So your approval cannot come from anyone or anything other than God. Amen. You have to settle that. He said, for, for you were formed my, before I formed your innermost parts. So that tells me he was involved with the intricate details of my life. So I might not like how big my nose is or how skinny my legs is, but he did. Yes. He does. Amen. And because he does, I accept myself. Amen. Because I am his beloved. Amen. Before I formed you in the womb, you're not a, it's not your mother or your father that approved you. He said, before I formed you. So that means you were in God and with him before you were ever in your mother's womb. Yes. I, you are my chosen. Yes. I am approved. You are approved of me. Scripture says my frame was not hidden from him when I was being formed. Mm. He knows everything about you. He knows the very number of hairs on your head. So accept yourself in his beloved. I love that word beloved. It says you are dearly loved. That means you are the apple of his eye. Yes. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. Another way to be free from rejection is to know your identity. Your identity has to be in Christ. You can't let your career, your success, your money, whether you're single, where you're married, no matter your size, where you come from, I come from South Bay, by way of Bell, but it don't matter. I'm not identical. I don't define myself as that. I don't define myself as fearful, as broken, as, as rejected. I am defined by the righteousness of God. Yes, I am yes. righteous because Jesus made me righteous. It had nothing to do with what I did, where I came from, what I'll do tomorrow, my cut you out. But I'm righteous because Amen. he declared me righteous. Yes. So that's your identity. Yes. That you are a child of the most high God. That you're of a royal priesthood. Yes. That you are sons and daughters of the most high God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Number three, meditate yes. on the love of the Father. Yes. My God, this thing is changing my life. Yes. First John 4 and 7 in the Amplified. Let's go there. First John 4 and 7, it says, Beloved, let us unselfishly love and seek the best for one another, for love is from God. So that tells us that he is the source of our love. Yes, he gave us people in the natural, people in the flesh, but God has to be the source of your love. Let's go down to 9. By this, by this, the love of God was displayed in us, and that God has sent his one and only begotten son, the one who is truly unique, the only one of his kind into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, that he chose us, that he approved of us. Romans 5 and 5 says the love of God has been shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. I think that's the scripture. Okay. That the love of God has been shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Romans 8 and 38, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of the Father. Who knows the breadth, the depth, the height, the length of his love. It is so great. And so as we meditate on the love of God, we no longer identify as rejected. We no longer feel the stain of rejection because we know the one that created us, 
love us more than anything. And he decided to love you before you ever chose to accept him, before you ever chose to love him. Amen. Number four, life with God. Scripture says that Abraham walked and talked with God. I'm learning to do that. I'm learning to walk with him, to talk with him about everything, about every past hurt, about what's in my soul, things that I know about that I don't know about. Our soul expands our entire life, so there's things that need to be searched out so they can be ripped up. So we need to have life with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Number five, renewing our mind with the word of God. We have to renew our mind. This is, this is how strongholds are going to be broken. This is how those things are going to be pulled down. That fear, that rejection, that, that approval addiction. Stop trying to do things in your self-effort. You're nothing without God. You need him. Get in his word. Get in his presence. I, I'm, a, I'm able to tell you as a witness that he's able to love you and to break all that over your life. Yes. Because you know who you are in him. You are his beloved. Yes. You are redeemed. You are chosen. You are consecrated and set apart. You're not average. You're not, you're not lonely. He's always with you. You're not forsaken. Your mother and your father can forsake you, but he'll take you up as his own. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is the love of God that heals us from the stain of rejection. Grace is the only one that can free us from this fear and this cruel addiction. He is well pleased with us because Jesus satisfied the Father on our behalf. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.